What do you want to talk about first? What are you doing here at the Chamber of Commerce? Yeah, I'm excited to be at the Chamber of Commerce today to talk about all the things that are affecting Sioux City and our surrounding area, specifically the Farm Bill. The Farm Bill, uh, we have to get passed by the end of September, and we talked about how important that is to our producers. We are literally the breadbasket to the world, and it's so important that we have a strong Farm Bill, especially uh, when it comes to insurance, conservation, research, trade, energy, biofuels. These all affect our producers, and we had a great discussion on that today. So you kind of mentioned it while you were talking. There's sort of two different priorities when it comes to the farm bill, depending on where you're from. Uh, how do you kind of reconcile that? Yeah, exactly right. So, so you have obviously uh, the things that affect our producers in the Midwest right here, right? Insurance, conservation, and so forth. And then you have things that affect East and West Coast, and that is a lot of the nutrition programs, SNAP programs. 82% of the dollars in the farm bill, that's over a trillion dollars, goes to nutrition programs. So we're working with those, and we're working with people from New York and, and California. Uh, we're trying to bring them down to the state fair this Friday and Saturday to show them what we have as uh, the breadbasket to the world. In the same boat, we're looking at New York and, and, and California and other places say, let's talk about nutrition. What can we do to make it more effective? So it's a really a collaboration on the committee to make sure we all know the different aspects of the farm bill and that we can have a successful farm bill when it comes to all these different parts. Going beyond just maybe regional differences, what do you kind of uh, expect in terms of specific issues might be the biggest holdups for the yeah, farm bill? Again, uh, there's a lot of regional issues, but the, the big issue that has been over the decades has always been the nutrition program. Because it's 82% of the farm bill, that's a lot of dollars that go to that area. Um, so it's just a matter of what we can do collectively to make the programs more effective and to get nutrition down to the right people. And, and that's the hot discussion of the day when it comes to the committee. Will the new farm bill be done before the current one expires? So the, 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 the current one will expire September 30. We will not have it done by then. So we'll probably have to do a one or two month extension. However, both the Senate and the House have said that we will get a farm bill done this year. That means by December, uh, we should have it done. And I, I'm excited about that. We have both agreed that we will work collaboratively, collaboratively, both parties, to get this done. So people who are on SNAP benefits shouldn't have to worry about those going away when this farm bill expires on the 30th? Correct, correct. There's going to be an extension. There's going to be extended when it comes to the, the SNAP benefits, also for the insurance, for conservation and things like that. Um, but no one will see a hiccup in, the pro in, in these different programs. Uh, but we have to make sure we get it done, and that's our task at hand. I kind of want to talk about the USS Sioux City for a moment. Um, obviously, a lot of people around here have feelings about the whole thing. But at the end of the day, you know, how do you hold a contractor like Lockheed Martin accountable for not producing the product they promised? Well, first of all, the USS Sioux City, USS Sioux City, it's just a, a shame, this great ship that was built only several years, about, years ago and now being decommissioned. And we have sent letters uh, to the DOD. We, we want to know what happened, what's going on, why did we all of a sudden switch uh, lanes and, and go a different direction. Uh, this is shameful for taxpayer dollars uh, on, on building these ships and now having decommissioned. And it's also shameful, I mean, the Sioux City uh, itself uh, created a lot of dollars to help support, support the commissioning of the, the, of the ship. And that's lost also. So I would love to see it be a museum, have it, have it in the uh, Missouri River and, and have people see it. So we're going to advocate for that. We're going to see what we can do to maybe uh, have that uh, brought here. But the path to holding somebody accountable would be through the DOD and the Pentagon. That is correct. They're responsible for this mishap. They're responsible for the lost dollars uh, that, that have occurred here on several of these ships that have been built and now decommissioned. So in May, after a year-long investigation, the DEA arrested 29 Iowans linked to prominent Mexican drug cartels. You recently sent an email to constituents vowing to hold these cartels accountable. What does that look like for you, and is this going to cost the taxpayers anything? Well, well, well first of all, we got to hold the cartels responsible. I was down on the Mexico border uh, by Tijuana and San Diego, and I saw firsthand all the drugs that have been seized and all the dollars that have been seized. So I created a bill saying, all right, we have 
billions of dollars that have been seized that we should use that, those dollars to build the wall, to stop the fentanyl coming through, and then also use a part of that, those, those drug dollars to help those that have uh, uh, got uh, hooked on fentanyl, especially the, our, our kids uh, in high school and things like this. Uh, it's our job to make sure that we stop the fentanyl coming in and then also help those uh, that have been uh, struck and used the drug. One more question. I think that's pretty much it. All right.